This is what the ecosystem looks like. Not complete. Customers, of course, are the center of everything, but I've excluded them in this particular chart. We have the four or five operators, Airtel, MTN, Entel, Smile, Swift, a few other marginal guys, but I've just listed the big, the big ones. We have the application content providers. We call them vast providers. These are the guys who annoy you. They send messages to you. Some take money away from you without your consent. And there's so many infraction being done by some of them. But I must also commend our regulator for creating, I mean, a good environment for those who do bad stuff to be punished. By the way, some of these companies, they are so big. Most have turnover in excess of one billion naira in a month. One billion naira. See some of the names are there. They look small, but they turn huge money by collecting 10 naira, 50 naira, 100 naira. Hopefully, generally from most customers who actually requires the services. There are some who give religious messages, some who give love tips, some who give health tips. But it's a big industry and it's mainly populated by local entrepreneurs. We have the handset manufacturers, Samsung, Apple, ZTE, Huawei. The majority of the devices in this country are supplied by Techno, a Chinese company. And uh, almost 70% of the devices in this country come through computer market in Ikeja. That small market in Ikeja account for over 70% of all answers in this country. So these are the market shares, just for you to have a feel as to who is dominant, who is not dominant. Of course, MTN is a clear leader. They've been around for a very long time, very consistent, same shareholding, doing this business continuously for almost, I mean, 16 years. They've got 36% market share in terms of customers. So the more or less a dominant operator. This is not the very important figure. What is Ibana is revenue, by the way. Although they sit on 36% of the number of customers, they sit on a much larger share of the revenue, the money you pay. So they clearly dominant operator in terms of revenue market share. And we have Glow, the only operator owned by a Nigerian. Reasonable customer market share at about 27%. And uh, we have the best network, about 25% market share. <laughs> about 15 years ago, all you did with your phone was to make a phone call. That was it. And we're so excited that you could make a phone call. But we moved. <laughs> 10 years after, to this, where you're able to send emails, check the internet, and do basic stuff with your phone. Now, we're talking about watching movies on the phone. You can watch CNN, you can Netflix, you can watch uh, the local films, foreign films, on the phone. But now, in the next couple of years, we're talking about Internet of Things. I like to say data is a clear differentiator. And uh, everyone, rich, poor, you need access to the internet. I think is at the very basic requirements of life. I would equate data or access to the internet to air, shelter, water, food. You just need it to survive in this environment. It's required. It should be made available to everyone. It should be a human right. Everybody must have access to data. And that is one thing that uh, we'll be talking about today. How do we make sure this becomes a leveler so that everybody knows what is happening? You can see what it did in the you know, North African countries. By being, it can change governments. It can create a new level of freedom. Because information is power. And access to that power is very important in creating value for everyone. You can see one of the major assets that we have to sell. When you know what your customers are doing, when you have 139 million, let's even say we discount this by a thought, let's say 100 million customers, we know what they do, everything, we know where they are. It's an important asset that can be monetized. No other company in this country possess this kind of asset. And this drives so many things. Let me start by asking Ayo. He is part of the, uh, one of those people trying to position the market ready for what you call your cloud computing in terms of right. How do you see, um, we discussing this telecoms issue, not from a narrow thing, from just uh, 
um, uh, with technical sets on how do we see the old idea of using um, the digital space to revolutionize Nigeria. Statistics have shown that most and more advanced economies, if for every 10% um, broadband uh, access you have, it's one thing that's quoted quite a lot, but they use the averages. You get, you know, um, a 1% increase in GDP. Actually, in, emer in, in advanced economies, it's about 0.3, 0.4%. In emerging economies like Nigeria, it's actually around about 2 to 2.5%. So it shows the importance of what uh, Shagun was talking about in terms of fundamental access to broadband being essential. And if we get this right, we're going to transform the efficiency of the country okay, and the impact we have on GDPs. And we need to um, get the investment um, climate right for infrastructure that we have to provide for laying the fiber, for delivering the data centers, and so on. And increasingly, you'll find that the telco businesses will not want to put money, because you didn't have a choice, say, two, three years ago, you had to build your own. But now, I mean, capital is expensive. You want to put the capital at the front end, which is an earning asset. You get a return on investment. If you, if you put it, you sold the towers, for instance, somebody else won't worry about that. At the back end, if you now you know, get somebody else doing that bit, which is highly capital intensive, efficient because it's um, a, a shared service, you put your capital at the front end to realize the, the, the return on investment. For the, for the um, um, regulator, if you take a holistic national view by facilitating the, all the enabling business environment and regulations and everything that allow the front end to work well, access to capital, okay, you get the bigger dividend in terms of uh, the, the, the performance of the economy and the GDP growth. I want to specifically focus on one major concern in this community. How do you get the informal sector, for us to capture the informal sector, using technology? I believe, I mean, if you ask me two major constraints to broadband penetration in this country, one is the right of way. Every authority thinks right of way is a revenue generating activity. In some cases, I don't mention some states. I've left the fiber by the roadside. I said to my guy, just leave it there. Because the cost of I me mean, just getting that right of way from some governments, just prohibitive. We would have negotiated something. You start digging, they come, they stop you asking for more money. I just, just leave it by the roadside. In some communities, we decide to leave. Because it's just prohibitive. We need to just have a different mentality towards them I in telco, especially towards broadband penetration. Is an enabler. You may not make so much money from direct transition of broadband, but what it's going to create is where the value is. If you enable businesses to try, you can make a lot more money from secondary collection of money from those enabled businesses than trying to stifle the path to success. That's the path to be successful. You must create that path for a lot more value to be created. Otherwise, I mean, uh, we're just going to go nowhere. We are all grown up enough to understand that we repeat these same words, lack of will. What does it mean? Um, well, I think uh, Sheku really articulated um, the issues very, very clearly. Uh, at the NCC, what we have tried to do is to make a case for the National Economic Council. That's where you have all the governors. And uh, during the tenure of uh, Dr. Mabala Johnson, she made a very strong case that we don't have to put the cart before the horse. Because the idea of um, taxing before having the infrastructure inhibits the deployment of infrastructure in the states. And that actually states can actually have their GDP grow by having this infrastructure there. So there was a MOU that came out of that presentation where all the governors were supposed to sign into. And the idea was to have a one-stop shop for all of the issues that has to do with taxes and right of way for the service providers. But the governors are reluctant to sign into that. So what we have been doing is some form of advocacy, you know, meeting the governors forum, as well as meeting the governors in their states 
is it because of the way the constitution is? The states have the right also to demand for some form of taxes. And so it's not really something you can, um, at the federal level, uh, just by, by fiat, say this has to happen. So it has to be some form of a compromise. And we have been on that. Um, the current EBC, uh, Professor Dambata, had also, had also made a presentation to the Governor's Forum, making a very strong case. Uh, but we have seen maybe some kind of um, light from some states, like Lagos State, for instance, uh, where they had to reduce the cost uh, that you pay in terms of right of way. And that has enabled the networks, you know, deploy some, although there are still some challenges still. But I think the governor, um, Governor Fashaladen, understood that this was standing in the way of development and economic uh, growth of the state. So they, they, they kind of put down the price by about 85% or so at a time. So really, it is about the governors having to understand that, look, if we have the infrastructure of fiber, for instance, in our state, and we have ICT, then businesses can grow, and they pay tax to government. But if you now tax before the infrastructure comes, the businesses wouldn't come. You wouldn't get the taxes paid. And just what uh, Sheikh said, look, they had to abandon some of the states. And not. So really, it's, an it's a work in progress. We, we, we keep engaging the governors and we believe that at the National Economic Council level, if the governors will agree to sign to that MOU, and we have that one-stop shop place where issues of taxes, we, we eliminate multiple taxation, for instance, we eliminate the challenges of right of way, and these are the things that actually have been hindering uh, the infrastructure deployment. And it is this infrastructure deployment that is required to drive the economy uh, digitally. We do need broadband penetration in this country. With a very deep uh, broadband penetration, it's going to enable so many sectors of the economy, whether it's commerce, whether it's medical, whether it's education. If you create that pipe, so many things can pass through that pipe to create the right environment for every other sector to thrive. We are like an enabler. We have seen it in so many other countries. There is a data that suggests that anytime you create a 10%, 10 increase in the broadband availability, you can actually increase your GDP by almost 2%. That's the fact that is available. So we need to just create the right environment for all the telecommunication companies to keep on investing in broadband so that other industries can benefit from this, I mean, fat pipe. Thank you very much, sir. Secondly, sir, we would like to find out, in the next five years, where do you see the telecommunication industry? And considering the fact that the whole innovation that is coming up soon, what should businesses and small-scale enterprises and start doing differently right from now henceforth? We are already 10% of the GDP, starting from very low digits, I mean, some few years ago. In the next four, five years, I see us getting very close to the 15% mark of the GDP in this country.